now it's time to preview an upcoming game. Hello there my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, today we're going to be playing a game that you've probably played a lot as a kid. Running around, hiding, stealing loot, trying to catch the bad guys. We're talking about cops and robbers here. This is a card game uh, by Devious Games Limited. Uh, plays uh, two to six players, it's relatively short, maybe, maybe 30 minutes long. Uh, and we're going to be looting, we're going to be stashing stuff on our secret hideout, we're going to be getting hooked up cars with all sorts of upgrades, new paint, we're getting cool drivers in there, we're going to be trying to get away from the cops with the loot, and whoever can get the most money to their stash without getting caught first is going to be the winner. So let's check this out, we're going to be uh, showing you how it's played, and we'll see you on the other side. In Cops and Robbers, you're trying to loot anywhere from $500,000 to $1 million, depending on how many players there are. Everyone starts with five of these robber cards, and there's three decks set out, robber, loot, and cops. There's three actions you can do on your turn. Let's go over these one at a time. The first action is looting, and when you loot, you take the top loot card, only you get to look at it. Hey, $50,000, all right. Uh, and then only you look at this, and then you put it face down in front of yourself in your own area, and then you can take one robber card. Add it to your hand. Now you can never have more than five robber cards in your hand. Now this puts me at six. And then I can play as many of these robber cards as I want. And at the end I have to make sure I have no more than five. If I did not play any of these cards, I would have to discard one to make sure I don't have more than five. Otherwise I can play as many of these as I want. I will go over what's on the back of these cards here in just a moment. The second action you can take is laying low. Laying low is uh, essentially just taking two robber cards. You're not doing much at all there. You're not gonna, you're not gonna uh, loot anything. And then you can play as many of these cards as you want. And again, always discarding down to five, but you may be playing enough of those that you're less than five at the end of your turn. That's laying low. And the last thing you can do is try to get away and stash the money that you have saved. Before we get to that last action, let's look at some of these cards and what they do. And when you play them, the actions that they actually do. Since we're talking about stashing in a getaway, all the loot that you've stolen, uh, let's talk about some of the getaway cards. Now keep in mind that the artwork here is not final. This is just a prototype to show you how the game works. Uh, now here, there's three different types of getaway cards. Um, there's types of cars, and they're named something funny like the Pimp Dried. And when you play these cards, again, on your, on your turn when you lay low or when you loot, you can play as many of these cards in your hand as you want. This is a, it says Getaway Runner, and now I have a car, which is a plus two. I'll tell you what that does later. Ready Eddie is a driver. So we have a car, we have a driver. This is Ready Eddie, and he gives me a plus two. And then we have a couple of upgrades here. We have Fresh Paint. And we have spiked wheels. All these, notice, say getaway. Getaway cards you basically play down. You can never have more than one car. You can never have more than one driver. And you can have never more than two upgrades, okay? If it, later at the time I have fresh paint now, but if I got another upgrade that was better than this, I could discard this and put the better upgrade down. But you can never have more than two here, one and one. You do not need a car, for example, to, to, uh, to get away. I mean, you could try to get away with just this if you wanted to. But the more cards you have, the better chance you have to get away. So these are some of the getaway cards. Now we'll talk about how, um, how, the, how a getaway in a, in, a, uh, uh, in a stash works right now. Okay, the third action that we were talking about is stashing. And again, that's trying to stash the loot you have. By the way, the loot cards go from nothing, there's actually some cards in here that say nothing, all the way to $200,000. There's some uh, 200, a couple of $200,000 cards there. So they, they range from that. Let's say I had this, that was my loot that I had. Of course, this would be turned over. No one else would know this but me. And let's say on a previous turn, uh, whether I uh, laid low or looted, I've been able to drop these cards down. Because when you stash, you have to already have your getaway set up. You can't drop them when you're getting ready to stash. I'm trying to take this loot and put it into, stash it into my secret hideout. Okay, so let's say I'm going to attempt to stash. What happens is uh, the number of cop cards get drawn depending on how many loot cards you have. So if I have two loot cards, two cop cards would be drawn. And we would flip them up. And those range anywhere from zero cops to three cops. And so we have a total of three cops here that are chasing me. So how this works is there's three cops chasing me. I have a plus two, plus two, plus two, plus one. So I have seven. I have a plus seven. We take that and we minus it however many cops are chasing me. So seven minus three, I have basically a plus four right now. 
If I am tied or ahead, meaning I have a zero or a positive amount, it starts with the player clockwise to me that's next to my left, and they can start playing some of their robber cards on me to try to stop me. And because some of these cards are one use cards that say, look out, for example, the red ones are minus two. So they can throw as many of these down as they want. So let's say the first player drops down a minus two and a minus two on me. So if you remember, we were a minus, uh, we were a plus four at the beginning of this because we had seven minus three is plus four, minus two and minus four, so we're even. So if it ended right now, I would still be able to get away because as long as you have a zero or a positive number, you get away. If you have a negative number, you will not be able to get away. So let's say that, and then the next player then plays this. So I'd be at a minus one. So if it's ended now, I would go to jail. Uh, we'll talk about going to jail here in just a moment. So let's say it comes back to me. I have the option of being able to play a positive card if possible, because right now um, I'm basically you know, at a minus one, and so I might not, I, I would be going to jail unless I could throw a positive one use card. Strike, for example, plus two, so now I'm positive. And this continues to go around until it gets back to me, and if, it, I, if I'm even or have a positive number, I get away. All these cards would then get discarded and I would get the loot and this would go into my stash and nobody could steal it there. That's kind of like where your reserve is. Your stash amount is how you win the game, 500,000 to a million. If for some reason I'm at negative number, by the time it gets back to me, we go to jail. Let's talk about jail. So again, if it had gotten back to me and I had no positive cards to play and I was at a negative number versus the cops, I would go to jail. And basically what happened is the loot cards that I did not be, I was not able to stash, go into the discard pile. And also the, any of the getaway cards, I, they are lost, pretty much gone. You gotta start over again and you lose a turn. And while you're sitting out your lost turn, you cannot play any cards. Now in that example, when the cop cards were drawn, I was trying to stash, it started with the person on the left because I had a positive number. If when you're trying to, trying to uh, stash, when you draw the cop cards, if you're already at a negative number, you get to play first. So depending on whether you're positive or negative at the beginning, that's who starts the stash run. Let's take a look at some more of these robber cards and some special cards that happen. So some of the special cards that are in the robber deck that you'll be playing is a crazy crime spree, which allows you to take one to four loot cards, because usually you can only take one, and then attempt to get away right away. That's pretty cool. You have a safe cracker, which you take two extra loot, and they only count as one. So when you're, when you're counting up how many cops are going to get you, two of them only count as one, which is cool. Next was an ejector seat. So let's say you were doing a getaway to try to stash some money and you got caught, you, you lost. You basically had a negative number at the end and you were getting ready to go to jail. You could select one of the loots that you were trying to stash and you get to keep it. And you don't go to jail, but you lose all your getaway cards and does not work on a caught card. One of the cops cards that comes up, there's a couple of these, actually has a caught and you're immediately caught when that happens. You cannot use this against that, but this does exist. So it's, it's somewhat powerful, but not overly powerful. Pick a lock. You can steal a loot from another stash. So earlier, I told you that once you've gotten away from the cops and this goes into your stash, nobody can steal it. This card allows you to break that rule, pick a lot, and steal from another stash, which is usually safe. However, that can be combined with a booby trap. So if you played this pick lock on somebody and they played a booby trap card, you would send the lock picker to jail. Mm. So you have dump loot, which allows you to lose all your loot pile and then escape the caught card. So we talked about that caught card earlier, uh, and this is sort of a way out of that. So if you were trying to get rid of, uh, bring your stuff to the stash and you got caught, this allows you to lose your pile, but you at least escape getting caught, which means you don't go to jail. And then up on blocks, you can steal an upgrade from another player. So we talked about upgrades earlier. They look like these getaways. So you could steal something like that from another driver. We have a snitch. You could force another robber into an automatic getaway. So if he's not ready, too bad. You snitched on him and now he's on a getaway. You can kind of take someone off guard with that. And then we have a car jack, which is steal a car from another driver. So we talked about cars being something like a pimped ride. That would just get stolen from somebody and into yours. You can feed the driver. So steal a driver for another car. So ready Eddie. Hey, we'd steal Ready Eddie from somebody else and we need now be mine. And those are the secret, those are pretty much all the special cards. And again, between two to four, uh, two to six players, between four and six, you need 500,000. Two, two players, you need a million. At three players, you need 700,000. Whoever has stashed that amount of money is the winner. All right, well, there's cops and robbers. So as you can tell, it's a very light, 
family-friendly card game that doesn't take too long to play. It's easy to teach. Uh, it has some hidden elements as to, hey, how much money do I have in my stash? How much money do you have in your stash? You don't quite know. Um, there's obviously that take that kind of messing with your buddy type of play where you're, you know, making them do a getaway when they're, when they're not ready, when you're throwing tax in the road, whether you're, you know, trying to make them caught, whether you're doing, you know, picking a lock and stealing their money. Uh, so there's a lot of that back and forth, uh, you know, combative type of uh, playing, ha ha, I did this to you type of thing. There's also uh, a press your luck element as to, hey, how many loot cards do I want to try to pull? Obviously, the more loot cards I pull, the more cops are going to be on my tail. Pressing your luck there. Do I want to get another loot before I try to get out of here? Uh, so if those types of elements of a game uh, sound good to you, uh, the Devious Games Limited this has this live on Kickstarter right now. There'll be a link right after this video just below me. Go ahead and go to that link and uh, you can see the Kickstarter page there and I'm sure they would love your support. Thanks for watching our review today. For more information about board games, as well as the number one board game audio podcast, check out Dicetower.com for reviews, interviews, and more. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Yeah. Yeah.